a no more stinky monkeys.com production. This is the seldom had heard tale of stinky claws. Uh, something I wrote back in December 28th, 2008, 10 years ago. And I thought I would give it to you now uh, via video. Okay. Old St. Nick's were waiting three to a green leather couch outside the personnel office at the Stacy's department store in the Chesterfield Mall in Manhasset, Long Island. Eighteen of them, red-faced and most with their own graying whiskers. Stacy's didn't go for wigs or fake beards. And it's too easy for a bad kid to pull hard and ruin tens of families' Christmases. The interviews were relatively short. Assistant Personnel Director Mrs. Weingartner had uh, their resumes. Most were Santas for several years at other stores before this Major League tryout. Sam Kierker had actually been a last-minute fill-in at last year's Thanksgiving parade, but he was now using a three-legged cane, and recent hip surgery was going to make the little tykes a heavy burden on his lap. Tom Werner was more reddish this year than ever, and too gone to remember the breath mints that always disguised the redness as origin. No, the best of this year's group was an out-of-towner. His name was Carl McNally from Red Bank, New Jersey. He had been a Santa at two different department stores in the Paramus Mall. Now he was moving up to the biggest mall in Long Island. Maybe Manhattan could be next. Uh, and it had been for the last three Stacy Santas. Carl got up from his emerald green seat, his sizable rump, leaving a nice deep impression in the reasonably new leather. Mrs. Weingartner was now not a woman you kept waiting. He gathered that from the pre-interview on the phone. So he hightailed it into her office. The other Santas thought that his red nose was a little brown. Carl sat there, not fidgeting too much, since he had been on literally hundreds of interviews during his 67 years. Mrs. Witchgartner, behind, as people called her behind her back, wore her glasses very far down her nose, which allowed her to look way down at her employees, both potentially and currently. Carl had seen her likes before and didn't flinch at her icy demeanor. He answered her questions with smart answers and asked for a few of his own like when could the parents expect their photos to arrive and other things that only an experienced Santa would know. This impressed her, but of course she didn't show it. Instead, informing him that this wasn't New Jersey, that Manhasset parents weren't really easygoing. They would be dealing with upper-scale children who would be demanding, pushy, and probably more bratty than he was used to. And the parents were likely, less likely to correct them. This part he hadn't expected, but he had dealt with bad kids before. His first job in Red Bank was in a, in a mom-and-pop store in a bad part of town. Rich rats had, been, had to be better than poor ones. Mrs. Witch would get back to him. When he got home at 5.35, the answering machine was already flashing the message that the job was his and it was going to start on Friday at 11 a.m., November 27th. He was the newest Stacy Santa, something akin to a four-star general in the Kris Kringle Brigade. Chapter 2 and I forgot, this was not written in 2008, this was written in 1998, it's 20 years old. November 27th came fast. Carl McNally was interviewed in late September and looking forward to his new gig for a good three weeks, when an irritated bowel started to bother him. He saw a doctor, a gastrointestinal guy named Dr. Gass, while his subway ad promoted him as 1-800-DOC-GASS. -S. Who said that Doc, uh, that's, that Carl's big problem would be his unending flatulence. He could pour Beano on any gas-causing food or not even eat the gas-causing food at all, and it would, wouldn't make much difference. Dr. Gas could prescribe him with some anti-flatulence medications, but it would slow down his bloodstream, thus making him drowsy and irritable. Not very Santa-like. So Carl decided to just tough it out to this poor woman's detriment. Peggy McNally had always been proud of her sharp sense of smell, but it, now it seems like a terrible affliction. Carl's first day at work started out well. He had just coffee, no milk with breakfast, and his first nine kids online were pretty good. But then little James Anderson crawled on his lap. Little being five years old, but he had to weigh 65 pounds, and half of that was his head and mouth. And well allowed one. He seemed to complain about everything and finally started pulling on Carl's real whiskers. Carl was getting irritated, but his bowels were even more so. After about the eighth tug on his beard, Carl couldn't control his quivering sphincter 
and out came a long, low-sounding hiney belch. At the same time, Paul was adjusting his weight to complement that of James's annoying bouncing. Paul had let one cheek up as the photographer finally took the, sh the long shot. Uh, took the shot, and to Carl's embarrassment, the aroma started to work its way up. James stopped his bouncing, and his face turned green. It smelled nothing short of burnt eggs on a sultry summer's day. Managed to engulf little James's nasal passages, and sent him reeling, whimpering to his mother. Mrs. Anderson was afraid this Santa had hurt her poor baby. But when she came close, she recoiled suddenly, putting her calfskin's glove up to her nostrils. She grabbed James's hand and walked to the she-elf's working podium to handle the final paperwork on her photographs. Santa Call excused himself while he went to the bathroom. James's reaction was one thing, but Mrs. Anderson's was another. Call tried to relax and calm him, his embarrassed self. He had always taken great pride in his appearance, his hygiene, and how he handled himself, but his, this bowel irritation might ruin all that. He looked. He took some deep breaths and made his way back to the Nutcracker Suite, as his Santa Village was called. The next child was more unruly than the last, and the deep breaths turned out to be a bad idea as Call's gas boiled in his stomach. This child, around eight years old, told Call that he wasn't the real Santa and that his glasses were far too fake-looking. Grabbing at Call's glasses, the kid started bouncing even more than James had, and Call got very upset, because these were not some drugstore reading glasses, but his very own prescription frames. So with the kids bouncing and Call's nerves and the sudden herky-jerky movements trying to stop the kid from twisting the glasses off his face, came a loud ba-boom. Not silent, but very deadly. The photographer, in the midst of snapping the shot, jumped from behind the camera to see what was the matter. Even the parents wanted to know what was, was caused such a clatter. With a tinkle in his eye and an embarrassed grin, Call's look gave away that it was his colon within. As the day went by, the better the kids were, the better Call's stomach felt. But the worse some kids acted, the worse his colon reacted. Until around 8.30, when the Nutcracker Suites sh shut down for the night. The store and the little stand made quite a lot of money that day. But the line did thin throughout the day as the aroma hung thicker than the pine scent from the trees. One kid even grabbed his own nose before jumping up on Santa's lap because his clothes were so stinky. The mother quickly grabbed his hand, afraid that Santa's smell was brought on by alcohol. Call went into the employee locker room to change when he saw a yellow sticky note attached to his time card. Mrs. Witchgarden had wrote, See me, 9.15, Monday morning, in red ink. The note didn't make Call's stomach feel any better. And the story will continue.